Hello everyone and welcome to part 9 of our Hackerlate tutorial. In this part we're going to be talking about how you can use Hackerlate to export or forward engineer your data models onto different types of structures, either file-based or instance-based or whatever it is that your particular physical data model might want uh, as output. Right, so we'll talk about that uh, right now but first I would like to remind everyone of the fact that Hackerlate is actually a tool with a purpose. Right? We really want to make it easier for people to understand the data structures that they're dealing with by helping them visualize and uh, graphically express that in entity relationship diagrams. These data diagrams just make it easier for humans to understand these data structures. They um, make it easy to design it but also to maintain it and to interact on these um, data structures with different types of stakeholders, both technical and non-technical stakeholders. Another thing that you want from a data model is you want it to generate contracts. You want it, it to generate schemas that are going to be understood by systems that produce or consume data. Right? So that these systems can understand each other unambiguously during their exchanges. And last but not least, I think it's also important to remind ourselves of the fact that data models are also useful to feed business-facing data dictionaries. So that any data citizen in your organization can understand the meaning and the context of the data when they are using it, whether it's in some kind of a self-service in analytics um, deployment, machine learning, artificial intelligence, whatever the purpose might be, right? the data model is supposed to make this understanding easier. So it is a means to an end, and I think it's important to realize that. So because it has this purpose, and because it is a means to an end, Hackerlate supports what we call forward engineering. Right? This is some kind of an export process where from the data model that you create in Hackerlate, you're going to be able to export this information to a particular um, uh, schema, right? a schema for a target that we support. Right? We do this through our plugin architecture, right? We have a plugin for all kinds of different systems. Uh, and these systems could be, you know, uh, servers, instances, but they could also be schema registries or just plain old files on your local machine or on some network drive. We also want to be including not just the data model in there, but also the, the configuration of those physical systems in some way, right? Like the constraints that we want to put in place or the indexing that we want to activate. Right? So, obviously, there are significant um, roles and rights uh, review considerations here. You don't want everyone to be able to do forward engineering um, on production systems, for example. Uh, or you might want to consider you know, separating the different uh, roles in your organization and um, have, um, for example, the output be some kind of a file that could be picked up in some downstream process for application to your tests or even production systems later on. When it comes to um, uh, exporting or forward engineering to files, you see here what the different file formats might be, right? So it could either be a JSON or a YAML sample document. It could be a schema or a YAML schema, a JSON schema or YAML schema. Uh, but we also have, you know, an Excel file that you can use to, uh, for example, perform bulk updates on data models, right? So we use Excel as a mechanism to um, let people very easily and, um, and productively edit uh, large numbers of data models uh, automatically or manually. We also allow you to generate an API file, a model-driven API file, as we call it, uh, based on the Swagger or OpenAPI specifications. Um, and then, of course, you know, we not only support that on your local system, but we uh, allow you to do that also to your Git-enabled system. Right? So that means that you will have on your local machine a Git-enabled directory that synchronizes with your um, uh, shared repos, and therefore you will, for example, trigger some kind of a CI-CD workflow. Last but not least, I'd like to mention that um, Hackerlate is also uh, supporting the end-to-end -end integration with data dictionaries. Right? So, for example, Colibra, that's probably the only one that we currently support. Um, but there's a live and real-time integration with a data dictionary like Colibra, and we are constantly evaluating and investigating other potential targets for us to uh, integrate with uh, as uh, data dictionaries. 
So let's show you how this might work, right? So we'll jump into our Hackalate environment right here. I have a sample uh, data model here, which is based on the famous uh, Northwind data model. And what I'd like to show you here is how you can, for example, forward engineer this into a file-based format, but also how you can do that into um, uh, instance-based uh, systems. So let's see how that works, right? So here at the top, you have a forward engineering button, right? So here I can say, okay, please forward engineer engineer that to a um, particular uh, location in my file system, right? I would like you to uh, forward engineer everything, right? Uh, you can say which specification you want to uh, use, whether or not you want to reference the definitions or resolve them, right? Um, and uh, you can also specify how to do that specifically. When you do that, it will ask you for a particular location for you to uh, put this in. And here I will just put this in a local directory here and um, this will be exported then. Right, so that's uh, very, very easy, very easy to do. Um, you can do this in all these different uh, formats and, and all of these different uh, options that you might have. Um, all of this is available for you to configure. Now, let me also show you how you can uh, apply this to an instance, right? And again, this is always going to be target specific, plugin specific, right? It depends on the plugin that you are using. If you're using a MongoDB plugin like I am uh, uh, right here, or if you're using um, a relational plugin for Postgres, or if you're using an Avro schema plugin or whatever it is that you're using, your forward engineering options are going to be a little bit specific to that environment. You can access this um, in different ways, right? So here, if I go here and I say, okay, I would like you to generate that um, uh, uh, MongoDB script, right? So then this is going to be uh, exported. You can say, okay, I want you to generate a an update script or, you know, include sample data. You know, you can have a number of configurations here. Or you can also go to this little tab over here and just immediately apply this to your MongoDB instance if you've got that configured, obviously. Right, so I've generated this here and I'm going to apply this script over there and I'm going to say, okay, which connection do you want to use, right? So this is a connection to a centrally hosted Atlas database, connect to it, and a few seconds later, the script has been applied, right? So let me show you that for one second here. And here you can see this, right? So this is uh, uh, the Compass, uh, the Atlas uh, or MongoDB tool that we use for managing uh, data stores, right? So here you see all of the different entities that I had in my uh, data model here in the ER diagram. Now, let me show you something uh, a little bit more advanced, right? So if I would say, for example, here on the customers collection, I want to add some indexes, right? So let me call this a new index, right? And I say, okay, which key do you want to use for that? Let's call it the uh, company name, right? Then uh, I save that and the MongoDB script will now be updated. Note that if I go to Compass here on the customer's entity, there is an indexes tab and there is only a, an index on the internal ID, right? So not on the uh, property that I just selected, which was the custom company name property. Right, but if I now apply this, apply this script to my Atlas instance, right, then you will see that if I now refresh this, that there is a new index that was created, right? So again, you can do all kinds of um, advanced things here with uh, our forward engineering capability. I hope this was a useful uh, overview. And obviously there's lots of things that you can uh, additionally do here. Like for example, you can do all of the capabilities that we just demonstrated here, not just through the UI, but you can also do it through the command line interface, for example, from a Docker container, right? So, but all of that is available to you uh, to uh, um, make your data modeling even more productive. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this part of our tutorial and I invite you to um, read more on it uh, on our documentation, our blog, the fantastic MongoDB data modeling and schema design book, or you know, any other online resource that you might fancy. I thank you for your attention and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.